and rivalry today. Um, trying to keep pushing things forward. So today is um, the last of the hookup for the plumbing. So here we have our brand new bladder tank. Um, this is a Adidas um, bladder tank. So uh, pretty, according to the instructions, very simple to install. We'll, we'll see how simple uh, that is. They pre-cut the hole, or at least one of them, uh, for positioning the valve, but they give you all the parts that go with it. So I need to assemble this, um, put the valve on, uh, orient it to where it's going to line up with our, our hose. Um, they give you the, the instructions. That's our water intake um, valve. And this is our tool to tighten up the nut. It comes with it. Uh, actually, this is the outgoing uh, water valve. This is the one we have to kind of cut and mount. And this is the water intake valve. So, because that's a bladder, um, we have to install some kind of protection uh, for the, the bag itself, the bladder itself, so it doesn't rub on the, the fiberglass. So if there's any, even though I painted the locker and it's, it's pretty smooth, uh, they recommend you put some kind of barrier in between the tank and the glass uh, just so there is no chance of it getting caught on a fiber or getting nicked or anything like that and uh, creating a mess. So this, we're going to um, basically just put some contact cement uh, on the corners and contact cement on the hull, and then we'll kind of line the compartment uh, with this. And then we can set our tank uh, on top of this. And I just have to, you know, trim it and cut it to size and get all the good stuff done. And we should be able to get our installation completed. I need to give this a, a little vacuum and, and a wipe because it's been uh, sitting on that locker for a while and, uh, and we want to get it uh, looking really nice and clean before you put it. So let me show you a little bit of what uh, where this is going. All right so this is our locker and if you remember from previous videos I went ahead and painted everything uh, tidied up all the wires and the, the hoses um, so everything is kind of nice and out of the way. We install our new um, water intake hose and the reason I made this so long is because I want to be able to have kind of a curve so this sits on top of the tank so as the tank kind of moves up and down from being full or empty uh, this doesn't get any kind of a kink. Uh, when the original, they had it tight all the way to the end, so there was really no way for the hose to move uh, when you fill the tank. So my guess is they never really got full capacity on the bladder tank because it was kind of pinned on that corner um, in a position where, you know, you can fill it up and it'll kind of push everything this way, but that side wouldn't get um, filled with water. So by doing the, the big loop, you know, when it goes up, it'll kind of come out of the way. When it goes down, It'll go down with the tank and it always will allow for, um, you know, the tank to get full to capacity. Now, you see that we have kind of all our, our ties. Um, this is going to be cover um, with that liner that I showed you. Basically, I'm going to put the liner all the way up to here covering this. So this, you know, they won't have any, any sharp edges um, going into the bladder tank. And then on this side, we have the water intake and uh, the hose that I ordered was kind of nice because they sent it to you sealed on the ends so you're not going to get any contaminants um, inside of your hose so when I'm ready all I got to do is cut this end off uh, hook it up to the tank and we're up and running now I still have some of the old plumbing here uh, this was the the old uh, outgoing water and I left it there because I'm going to use it later to run lines 
so it's easier to have something to use as a guide. It's kind of out of the way because it's over here. This is a drain for overfill. The new tanks don't need it. Um, at least this uh, Vetus tank doesn't need one. Uh, you don't need a vent for an overfill. So uh, this is just sitting here unused. But at some point, um, I'll probably pull it out. This is our valve for the drain on our sink, which is right up here. So it comes out back and it drains um, right out this way. Right now I have it uh, closed because we're not using the sink, so no point in, in having a valve open. So um, I'm going to vacuum this, uh, install our uh, liner, uh, you know, cut where I'm gonna put the valves, and uh, I'll show you how we're doing that install. Uh, hopefully this is one of those you measure a bunch of times and you only cut once so you don't screw it up and uh, hopefully everything will go as planned. And after that, we can um, do a test and put some water in into the tank, make sure it's not leaking, and we can turn our water on because everything else is already hooked up. So let me get a uh, cleaning and getting this stuff ready. Okay, so I have the tanks. So what I'm doing is measuring uh, a piece of foam roughly about the same size as the tank. And I'm going to cut that off and install it uh, in the locker and use just contact cement to uh, stick it. And after that, I'm going to finish uh, hooking up the valves. Uh, this is going to be on this side for the, uh, the water intake. And I'm going to put the, um, this is going to be the lower corner on, over on, on this side of the bag. So I'm going to put the uh, outgoing water on that corner uh, to make sure that there's always uh, downflow pressure uh, from the bag uh, out into the pump. Now, I have a pump, so the pump is just going to suck the water out no matter where it put the valve. Um, but they say they recommend that you put it on the, on the lower end. So we're going to do that. The other thing we have is the bag has um, these rings, and that is so we can... Uh, put some fasteners just to help keep the bag in place. So I have to uh, look down below and see where we're going to attach those. Um, so, you know, let's kind of get cutting, cutting and going. Okay, so I'm uh, almost ready. Uh, I'm going to be using contact cement. Uh, this is a uh, Wellwood, you know, contact cement. Uh, it works with about anything according to the instructions. So it says to shake it for about two minutes um, and then you apply a coat on both surfaces that you want to glue. Let it sit for about 10 minutes uh, or until it gets tacky and then you kind of stick the two together. So I'm gonna get some gloves on because I don't want this stuff all over me. And I'm kind of working a very tight spot, so I hopefully will be able to get the angle right to make it stick. I'm going to use a little bit of isopropyl uh, alcohol to uh, kind of wipe and clean where I'm going to be uh, applying the glue. Uh, I like using alcohol better than I like using acetone, uh, primarily because the, the alcohol will evaporate completely and won't leave uh, film. So yeah, I usually like cleaning with this. So. Uh, let me clean the area and get the uh, glue. Okay, uh, it's been about five, six minutes, so now I can stick the surfaces together. Because I don't have a lot of room to maneuver and this uh, material kind of rolls fairly quickly, what I decided to do is break both surfaces and stick it, and I'll let it dry uh, for a couple hours uh, before I put in uh, the bag inside. So while this is drying, I'm going to go uh, start preparing our bladder to, for installation. So I'm following the, the instructions uh, on the manual. And this valve, basically what you do is, if you notice, um, the valve itself has a recess. And that recess uh, has this uh, washer that has the opposite. So when the plastic is in between the two, it's gonna squeeze it in and kind of trap it 
um, with this uh, lock nut on top. So the, the trick is you don't want to make the hole too big. So they said to use the, the ring as your gauge. And then from a positioning standpoint, we got to figure it out. We don't want to be right on the corner uh, because that's going to potentially get tucked underneath the, the hoses and the electric. Um, so we probably want to be a little bit higher, uh, at least for this particular application. And I may just wait to kind of present the, the bladder inside of the, the compartment and kind of see, you know, if this was, you know, full of water, uh, where would the, uh, the corner point be for this to get attached? After that, we got to kind of mark the ring, use a pair of scissors to cut the hole and then wedge this inside of the hole and do the assembly. So on this side, it already had the hole, so all I had to do was um, install it, you know, basically just put the washer. I haven't timed it because I haven't decided whether I want this further, you know, straight back or maybe up at an angle. I think once we get it inside of the compartment, uh, I'll have a better idea of, of the angle I want on the valve and then I can tighten it out ah, with this. And I'll go in the holes. And what they say to do is you you tighten it, uh, you fill the tank with water, um, you let it sit and see if you have any leaks. If you do, you tighten it again. Two days later, come back and check it. And if necessary, tighten it again. And four days later, uh, same thing, come back and recheck it and, and tie it again if necessary. Uh, if it's not leaking, then leave it alone. You, you don't want to over tighten it. Uh, you just want it uh, tight uh, enough that it's going to hold in place and it's not going to leak. So, but because basically the bladder itself acts as a gasket once it's pinned in here. So, we're pretty close. Um, like I said, I'm going to wait to for this to finish drying. I'm gonna give it a couple of hours, but you can see now we have a nice uh, smooth surface. The material is covering our hoses and the electric, so nothing is, you know, it's not gonna get pinched in there. And once I set the bag, I'll go ahead and put the straps that. Okay. So I'm presenting the bag. So I have it all the way uh, to the bulkhead back there. The, the, the compartment bulkhead and everything is sitting on the uh, cover uh, it comes all the way to the edge because uh, even at this angle it's coming off from the top it should move up and out of the way now that the bag is going to be set up right and it's in the middle so it should have uh, plenty of room to come all the way to the top and fill the bag um, fill the bladder with water so I'm going to cut it about there and hook it up and I'll have this valve kind of facing straight out. And then on this side, um, the, the bladder is going to sit against the, the side here. So I'm going to install the second valve, the intake valve, or the, uh, let's say the outgoing valve to the pump. Um, in here, uh, because when the, the bladder empties, that's probably going to be about the lowest point. It's not going to get caught with anything. And, um, you know, if the bag stays pretty much in this shape, it just kind of expands up and down. Uh, that would be a good spot for the, the valve to sit. That would be kind of the, the lowest point as I can um, get it based on the dimensions of the compartment and the bag that I'm working with. So I'm going to get my pencil and mark that. And uh, then I'm going to secure the upper rings. Uh, the border of the bag is right here. So as long as, you know, there's room coming down and water fills up, uh, we should be in good shape. And then I'm going to screw this into the liner. Uh, there's a, an empty compartment behind this for storage, which is this one I got full of all my hoses so I can screw in safely without poking a hole and that's going to secure the upside of the bag uh, and I'm going to do the same on the back side and that should be it I should be able to make the connections 
uh, start pouring some water in and uh, and then after four days to make sure I have no leaks then I can go ahead and um, clean the bag and treat sanitize the bag so then we have uh, potable water um, that we can drink all right so I got my circle um, marked no I need to use a pair of scissors and they said to be careful not to uh, cut the back side a razor blade to kind of poke a hole I can get my scissors in there and then I can cut around. There we go. Alright, so I got my, my hole cut. And to insert and snug. This one is going to face aft. Uh, remember that when you put the washer, the the edge, that little triangular edge, hopefully you can see that in the video, that goes down. So it's basically creating a, a sandwich and using the bag itself as the, um, as the washer. So we're going to slide this Okay. Gonna hold the valve and gonna hide and tighten this all the way down. I'm gonna use a little tool they provided and you don't wanna over tighten it, you just According to instructions, just go until it stops. All right. So, and then we come and check it once we put water on it um, after the second day, after the fourth day, and make sure that if it's leaking, then we kind of continue tightening it until it stops. Um, so I'll probably fill it up with water until this area is full and make sure this is tightened and then fill up the rest of the bag and then tighten the, the other um, the intake. So this one, we know we want it half. So let me make sure I put the washer in the right direction, which I did. Actually, it looks, looks scarier than I thought it would be. <laughs> I figure if I mess it up, that's a, a big mess up so but I didn't so I'm happy and just tighten this all the way by hand and okay okay we're all set all we gotta do is uh, mount it uh, screw the two rings connect the hoses and we should be ready to have fresh water on Reverie. Okay, the bag is installed. So we have our water bladder, we have our liner, everything is strapped in. So that's our outgoing water. And over here we have our incoming water. Everything is double clamped and uh, we screwed in the, the corner uh, just to make sure that this is going to stay in. Now, if you look at it from the outside, you can see what I was saying that the bag is a good about a third of the bag to almost a half of the bag is underneath the locker. Uh, that's going to work out uh, just right. And next thing is to uh, Put some water in it, uh, check for leaks, fired up the pump, 
and uh, see if we have running water. Okay, we're uh, back on rubbery. Uh, we finished uh, all the hookup. Now the, the big test is filling the tank with water, uh, or at least starting to add water to the tank and make sure we have no leaks. And then uh, turn the pump on and let it run and see uh, how we're doing. Now, where I'm docked right now, I don't have any uh, access to fresh water, at least not fresh water that I would trust. So uh, I went home and I have a, a inline filter. I put it on our spigot at our house and fill up uh, two five gallon jugs of water. So I'm going to pour those in the tank and uh, make sure that we don't have any leaks. So this is probably, so far what we got. Okay, so I pour about two gallons of water. Now this is a pretty big bladder, so I, I'm gonna have to pour the whole thing in and uh, and see how it behaves. But so far, at least right there where the water's coming in, uh, there's no leaks. So that's, uh, that's in good shape. And then this is the low point of the tank. So we'll see how that looks uh, once we put in about 10 gallons and then we'll do some testing. Now, people are always asking why things take so long. Uh, because unfortunately, when you do things on a boat, the, the first part of it is demolishing. And once you get the demolishing done, then you have to do the repair and the installation. And once you do that, then you have to go through the testing phase and make sure that that's operating the way it's supposed to. And then the last part, especially with the water system, is you have to sanitize the entire system. And what that means is uh, I'm going to put water in the tanks and I'm going to run the pump and make sure that water runs through all the, the places and I don't have any leaks. And I'm going to let it sit for a couple of days and make sure that, you know, no new leaks uh, pop up out of nowhere. Uh, after a couple of days, I'm going to pump all the water back out and I'm going to sanitize the system. And what that means is uh, I'm going to put chlorine uh, or bleach uh, mixed in with the water and I'm going to fill the tank all the way up and run it through the system and let that uh, water with bleach kind of sit in the hoses, the pumps, uh, the spigots and the, the system for at least 24 hours. Um, once that's completed, then I have to empty everything again and then refill it up with fresh water and then rinse it one more time and then I can fill it up and I can start using the water that's in the tank. So that's why things take so long because pretty much every project on a boat is the same scenario. You have to demolish or tear down, fix it, then you have to test it and then you have to clean it or get it ready so you can use it the way you're, in, you're intending to. So uh, let me drop some more water in those tanks and uh, in that tank and see what happens. All right, so I put 10 gallons, which is uh, about 40 liters. Uh, no leaks over there and no leaks over here. So I guess the next next test down below. Yeah. Okay. Next test is I'm going to turn the pump on, fresh water pump on. Uh, okay. Uh, we got a little bit of a leak here. So one one leak so far. Not bad. All right. I tightened up the fitting and that's not the leak. So. Let me um, turn the sink on. All right. We got water. <laughs> okay. I got to clean that. Well, let's check our head. So we can take a shower. Okay. So I 
this. If I pull this, then it goes to the shower head. Then I can close it when we're showering. This is an old shower head. I probably have to clean it up. Uh, but hey, it's working. If I push this back down, get water back in. And the drains seem to be working, so I gotta polish that. Down here, no leaks. So I think we can call that a success. I think we can call that a success. <laughs> we got water, running water on the boat. So um, now I can start the process of cleaning things up now that I have water. And um, for now, I need to kind of let things settle. So turn all the faucets on so there's water on all the lines. Um, there's, there's water pressure. Oh, sorry, a little hot today. And um, let me just turn the water pressure up. So now what I'm going to do is just let it sit for a couple of days and make sure I don't have any leaks on any of the fittings, uh, especially on the bladder tank. The other thing I'm going to do is kind of monitor uh, with the boat movement, you know, what does the back do, that bladder, so I can, you know, maybe attach it a different way or secure it just to make sure it doesn't shift around when we're sailing. And uh, after a couple of days, if we don't have any leaks, then we can move forward with the next step, which is um, sanitizing the entire water system. Uh, but I'll spare you that. Basically, it's going to be uh, a lot of uh, me filling up the tank. Uh, with a little bit of bleach, um, you know, there's a ratio, I think it's uh, two drops per gallon or something like that. I have to research and make sure I don't mess, make a mess. But we're going to sanitize it, run water with bleach, fill the entire system, fill all the hoses, let it sit uh, for 24 hours, then rinse it out and then do it again with uh, fresh water and rinse it out again. Uh, and after that, we are ready to start uh, using the water system in Reverie and the water is potable water so we can drink it but I always use an additional filter so water going in is filtered going into the tank and the water that we're going to drink is going to go through a filter as well. Uh, well that wraps it up for this episode we have successfully added water to Reverie. Um, if you like our videos please click on the link below and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we are sharing everything we're doing on Reverie. Hopefully this will help you with your project. And, uh, you know, we'll see you in the next chapter. Thank you.